Hello, you've made your copy of the Jamboard. We are looking at angles formed by parallel lines and a transversal. And we're reviewing what you've learned in this lesson. Up at the top, you can rename this. Instead of copy of, you might put your initials there. And we can see that there are 15 frames and this is just the cover frame. Let's go on to frame number two. Vertical angles are a pair of angles formed by two intersecting lines. These angles are opposite each other and they touch at the shared vertex. So it says to drag the dots to show two pairs of vertical angles. So one pair of vertical angles, we can use these yellow dots. Any vertical angles at all. So I'm going to pick angle two and why not angle three? That's a pair of vertical angles. And then I'll go down here with the darker bluish border and I'll do angle five. What would be the vertical angle with angle five based on the definition? That would be angle eight. And hopefully you know that vertical angles are always congruent. They have the same measure. Frame number three is a review of adjacent angles. And these are angles that share a ray and a vertex. They are side by side. And when they form a straight line, we say that they form a linear pair. So like angles one and two would be adjacent angles. Angles six and seven are also adjacent. And these are not necessarily congruent. But in the case of this diagram, because these two adjacent angles form a straight line, they will be supplementary. Frame number four is next. Alternate interior angles. We now have a pair of parallel lines and a transversal. And the alternate interior angles, they're going to be on alternating sides of the transversal. One's going to be high, one's going to be low. One is on the left and one is on the right. And we have another pair of alternate interior angles, angles four and angle five in this case. These are in the inside of the parallel lines. And whenever you have a pair of alternate interior angles, they are congruent. They will always be congruent. Frame number five talks about alternate exterior angles. These will also be congruent. And they're on the outside of the parallel lines. One is high, one is low, one is on the left and one is on the right. And I have another pair of alternate exterior angles. I can do angle two and angle seven. Corresponding angles are a pair of angles that are on the same side of the transversal. They are located in matching positions or corresponding positions. We can also think of them as similar corners formed by the lines and the transversal. So if I look here at these four angles and I pick an angle, any one of them, I'll pick angle two. Then in this other group of four angles, the angle that occupies the same position as angle two is angle six. So two and six are corresponding angles. They will always be congruent in the case of parallel lines and transversals. Now, if I look at this same group of four angles and I look at, for instance, angle seven, well, actually, let's look at something on the other side of the transversal. Let's look at angle eight. Notice it occupies that lower right corner. So the angle over here with the lower right corner would be angle four. Four and eight are also corresponding angles. Frame number seven, we have same side interior angles. And so when we talk about interior angles, we're talking about these angles inside the parallel lines. Same side would be on the same side of the transversal. So let's look, call angle three and six same side interior angles. Notice angle three is acute and angle six is obtuse. So these are going to be supplementary. They will not necessarily be congruent. Same side interior angles on the other side would be four and five. And again, they are supplementary. Frame number eight, we have same side exterior angles. All right, exterior angles, we're talking about angles one and two and seven and eight. Same side of this transversal would be like angles two and seven. 
or underneath the transversal, still exterior would be angles one and eight. These angles, same side exterior angles will be supplementary. Frame number nine, we're identifying a pair of angles. We're determining the relationship between the angles. Okay, so corresponding angles, feel free to go back and find what we talked about with corresponding angles, right? But if you don't need to go back, test your knowledge of it right here. Corresponding angles, well, I'm going to pick an angle, angle three. I see the position it occupies. The corresponding angle down here would be seven. So I'm going to pick angles three and seven. You can pick any pair of corresponding angles. It does not have to be three and seven. Vertical angles, I can pick any pair. I'm going to pick five and seven. And if you need to look back, please, by all means, do so. Alternate interior angles inside the parallel lines on alternating sides of the transversal. Let's do three and five. Same side interior angles. Um, I'm looking at four and five here. I also could have picked three and six. And finally, any linear pair. Um, would be two angles that form a straight line. Let's do one and four. And they are supplementary if they form a linear pair. Okay, moving on to frame number 10, finding the value of X. Well, X and 52, these are alternate interior angles. They are congruent, therefore, we know X equals 52 degrees. Number 11, classifying these angles. They're outside the parallel lines. They're on the same side of the transversal. Same side interior or exterior angles will always be supplementary. So we wanna do 180 minus 145. I'll just grab a calculator and I'm getting 35 degrees for X. 12. These are alternate exterior angles. Alternate exterior angles or alternate interior angles are always congruent. This one says find the value of X that would result in these lines being parallel. Well, if these lines are parallel, then these would be alternate exterior angles, which would be congruent. So I'm going to double click here and I found a nice text box. I'm going to set these equal. I'm going to subtract 4x from both sides by the subtraction property of equality. I'm going to add 20 to both sides. The addition property of equality allows me to do that. The division property of equality allows me to divide both sides by 3. And I get that x is equal to 12. Just put a sticky note here. x equals 12. Again, checking my work, I set these equal. I subtracted 4x from both sides. I added 20 to both sides, and then I divided by 3. Looks good. Frame number 14 is the last one. Now, this one um, is interesting because when I look at these two angles, I can't exactly classify them. But I do, so in other words, they're not alternate exterior angles. They're not alternate interior angles. They're not same side anything, and they're not corresponding angles. But here's what I do know. These lines are parallel. And whenever you have one pair of parallel lines and a transversal, the, any two angles are always going to be either congruent or supplementary. These, you would agree, are not the same measure. One is acute, one is obtuse. Therefore, these angles are going to be supplementary. I can write an equation, adding their measures and setting them equal to 180. Why don't you pause this video, work out this equation, and see if we agree. So I'm going to combine like terms, 10x minus 10 is equal to 180. I'm going to add 10 to both sides of the equation. 
and I get 10x is equal to 190. I'm going to divide both sides of the equation by 10, and x is equal to 19.